My name is Abby, and I am here with Havaya Mighty for WDBM East Lansing down at South By. How are you feeling? We were just talking about your show last night. Yeah. It was crazy. It was crazy. I'm feeling really good and accomplished. Definitely yeah. tired and a little bit worn down, but like for the best reasons. So, right. For yeah. sure. So I was hoping we could talk a little bit about your mixtape, Stock Exchange. Yeah. Um, we love it at the station. We play it in our rotation. So Thank you. A, yeah, of course. Appreciate the support. For, of course. Um, and so we were wondering, like, does the mixtape status, calling it a mixtape, give you more freedom to create, like, a concept-based project without, like, the confines that may come with an album designation? Yeah, I think really initially it was called a mixtape because it was never intended to be a project. So when it mm -hmm. became a project, it felt more like, a compilation of ideas that were never intended to like live together okay. so for me like when i curate an album i definitely think about i try to think about it from the beginning process and so a part of it was yeah just there was there were different confinements in that they they weren't meant to kind of be like a part of a you know a part of yeah. one thing but you know releasing them and, and and what that meant and the digital perception of the songs and not having that real world kind of like validation right became an overarching theme for every song that was being released so it, it, in a way it feels like an album for many people yeah but yeah you know i think for me because of the intention behind the origin process of the of those songs mm -hmm. it just did not feel like an album it felt like you know a compilation which i classify yeah. as a mixtape so yeah no that's awesome and you just kind of touched on this but what inspired you to pursue the project, uh, exploring how monetary and social status evaluations kind of define individuals today? Yeah, I think the biggest inspiration was COVID, you know, yeah. and just the restrictions yeah. of everything and mm -hmm. still wanting to put out music in that time and realizing that the reception to the music felt completely different right. and like how big of an impact that was on my mental health. That was an interesting process for me. So I felt like I was only as good as the song I put out last. And that was a very mm -hmm. interesting concept. Like the, what have you done for me? Like the, dun, 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 dun. like it was like <laughs> that. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that, that really kind of like catapulted the idea of each song creating this kind of fluctuation of internal emotions and in turn, like how I honest, honestly treated myself each month, whether I ate, ate breakfast or, you know, mm -hmm. went to the gym. Like it was really reflective of how good I felt about the songs I was making. It was an interesting parallel that shouldn't exist. Right. And so breaking that construct, breaking that kind of normality that sh that is false that came out of the pandemic and that I created mentally led to like the project and like trying to remind myself to validate myself outside of this right. like digital perception because like it's not real. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really confusing yeah. in a time where like followers and likes and streams and all that like indicates your value. But it's also like it's there's an element of it that is obviously like applicable and it matters for business, but it's not like yeah. real. Right. And it was like this right. interesting thing that was happening. Right. Yeah. yeah. And it may be applicable for business, but when it starts to affect your mental health and how you're, you know, things like that. There's a separation that has to happen. That, right? yeah, yeah, completely. Yeah. So how do you feel about like streaming services that like Spotify, for example, there's been a lot of, of flack with it recently with like artists taking their music off. But there's been like an argument about the, you know, how bigger artists can do that because they, you know, are making money without it. Like, how right, do you right, feel right. About streaming services, then, yeah. and, like the. It's. I mean, that's a big factor, right? Because a smaller artist not being on Spotify is going to be devastating for their career. Or at least there's, mm -hmm. at least in 2022, it seems that way. Like right. these things can change, and it's not like Spotify always existed, but or other streaming platforms always existed. Um, yeah, it's 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 definitely a conflicting feeling because a lot of these streaming platforms they don't pay you that well for right. the art that you you know sweat and blood and tears like to make it and then you know the the platforms kind of just benefit and give you pennies so of course yeah. it's like why would i put my music on these platforms but it's also the easiest way for the fans to access the music exactly. and the fans matter more than anything so exactly. that's kind of the difficult thing for me is like how will i like do i have the infrastructure or resources to create like an ease of access for those fans if mm -hmm. i were to pull my music and I think if I were a bigger artist who had that, like I could play with different ideas or create my own platform or, or do something crazy like that. But of course, when you're a smaller, small fry, <laughs> there's there's restrictions and it's you kind of want to be available to the fans. Right. Because like you're saying, how else are people going to, you know, find it? Spotify is really great at like 
the adding artists to playlists and you know i don't know it's like you're saying in 2022 it just seems like the way so i was just wondering your thoughts on that because i i've been myself uh just looking into it it's kind of conflicting because like you're saying accessibility for one but also you know people want to make a living exactly it's 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 hard because of course i want to put my art you know where it deserves to be you know Mm -hmm. recognized and, and have it kind of like pay me back right mentally physically financially but then like the fans though yeah. like i know yeah. a lot of people find my music on these different streaming platforms and i feel like to like i i like for my music to be available wherever like on mm-hmm. every platform possible because you don't know where people feel comfortable yeah so like it's not even just spotify it's like apple music soundcloud title like there's apps that i don't have on my phone but somebody else does and i would love for them to kind of like have this ease of access i don't want them to have to like download another app just to listen to me and to be honest they won't like yeah. they won't so <laughs> You know, I kind of want people to be able to go wherever they're going to go and the music is just going to yeah. be there. And, you know, that's also part of, like, strategizing. I think my music is good enough that, you know, mm-hmm. people are going to find it and, 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 and want to kind of continue to engage with it. But, of course, yeah, it's a catch-22 when you're not right. being paid what the music is worth. So, mm-hmm. luckily, you know, even though I'm small fry, you know, I do make money in other ways as well, which also allows right. me to not have to think about it as much. You know, I do back end stuff and, right. I, you know, I produce and, you know, just other things that allow me to kind of like um, create income where I don't have to really think about like streaming as my main source, you know. Yeah. So yeah. in a way, I, I still benefit from having other resources as well. So. Right. Right. But even just recognizing that and also your emphasis on the fans, I think that says a lot about you. And also, I feel like, you know, we'd feel that in your music as well. Like it's genuine. It's true. Thank uh, you. Yeah, of course. So going back to the mixtape, like you had some features on there that were pretty cool, like uh, Mala Rodriguez, Jalen Santoy, Toby. Yeah. <laughs> How do you Dang. decide what artists that you want on your projects? Yeah, I think I I try to decide on artists where I'm not going to try to tell them what their artistic expression should feel like. Mm -hmm. So I try to reach out to people that I feel very confident in whatever they're going to do. I want to have a conversation about what the song means to me and, you know, just get catch a vibe. But like one thing that I'm really proud to say is that I like, I've never had to be like, Oh, could you rewrite this lyric or, you know what I mean? And like that, if that happens, it happens. But I try to reach out to people that I feel will be able to embody what I feel the song needs. Mm -hmm. And like, naturally like from their you know kind of authentic expression not me telling them what it needs to sound like so you know with toby like i built that beat around i built good on my own tonight the production around like vibes that he was feeling and then and then i implemented like what what made me want the song too so it was kind Mm -hmm. of a, a bridging of the gap and i think as well because i produce i'm able to do things that kind of fit what the artist's vibe actually is too so like yeah. even with the protest i collaborated with yizzy on that song and then he recorded his verse but there were so many things that we did after like we cre- recreated certain parts of the production to fit his flow there was some repetition that we did because the verse was a little bit shorter than like the set like i don't tell people really what like yeah you know i'm just like yo it's, feel it yeah feel it and i love what comes out of that authenticity sure. if that makes sense so sure. i just really try to work with people that i know are gonna body it and i don't really have yeah. to say too much or do too much yeah, yeah yeah are there any like artists you'd like to work with in the future any dream artists i'm working on a dream list right now yeah. um it would be dope to work with roy woods okay uh it would be really dope to work with i'm looking at like people from my city right now because yeah. you know i feel like there's so much happening in Toronto right now. Yeah. And there's so many talented artists. So, uh, you know, watching Roy Woods, um, I, I think it would be amazing to collaborate with Division. Mm. Um, I don't know. In Missouri, is that where you're from? Or Michigan. Michigan. Sorry. Michigan, the other M1. Nah, that's all good. That's all good. <laughs> but um, <laughs> Division is, a, is, is uh, they're dope. They're from Toronto as well. And yeah. um, would love to work with them. I'm looking at, you know, I'm looking at some other artists as well. It would be dope to work with Shad. Um... And then, of course, there's like, I mean, like, I feel like it's it's not too big to say. I'm trying to think like documentary Kanye these days, you know? Yeah. So, you know, yeah. one day me and Rihanna, hopefully, <laughs> we'll do a track, you know? Yeah. I know Please. it sounds, you know, but that's how you got to think oh, well, if you yeah. want to manifest something, right? Exactly. Like, you, what's that saying? Shoot for the moon, at least you'll land among the stars. Type Absolutely. Of idea. If you don't ask, how are you going to get, even if yeah. it's a no. You like, maybe I won't work with Rihanna, it. but maybe I'll get a track with ASAP Rocky. Yeah, you know what I mean? Right, right, right. There you go. <laughs> I'm joking, but, like, yeah, they're both so amazing. It would be 
there's Kendrick Lamar. Like there's yeah. like there's like a, a wish list that I feel is like somewhat accessible, and then a wish list that feels like completely. You know what I mean? But like again, like like you said, shoot for the shoot for the stars and. I don't know what the saying is, but yeah, shoot, I feel it. shoot <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, uh, and like you said, manifesting, like you gotta think like that, like that's how you're, you'll get it. So yeah, yeah, it ain't nothing too far, you know. <laughs> facts, facts, facts. That's actually it leads into you were talking about uh, Toronto artists that you really like. One of the questions that we had coming up, that like I was just gonna ask you is, what other artists from Canada do you think deserve more attention? Mm. Yeah, I mean, like, we were talking about Toby. I think that, you know, he, I think he's getting a lot of attention, though, and it's really mm-hmm. nice to see. But I think I feel like I've said this for many years, but Claremont II is one of the artists that, um, he's on my project, 13th Floor, on a song called Smoke. But if you listen to his own art, like, he's also, like, a producer. Mm-hmm. He produces a lot of his stuff, and he also, like, does his own videography. Like, just a really talented individual. I think that that's someone that should definitely get more shine. I will always, I will always yeah. say that. I, I think I, was, I will always feel that. And this may sound a little bit biased, but my sister Omega Mighty is like, if you think I'm a good artist, Mm -hmm. just know it's part, like she's part of where it came from. Like Mm. she played a show last night too, which is crazy, but back home, I wish I could be there, but we played a show on the same night. And like, she just dominates the stage. Like in a way that people tell me I dominate the stage when I watch her, I'm enamored. So I definitely think that's another artist that like, I just can't wait to see her occupy more spaces. Um, yeah man for sure yeah yeah those are all those are all really cool and we i mean we try to branch out but i think canada's uh one place funny enough we're close to it being in michigan (laughs) but like we don't really hear much about it michigan like we if you go to detroit there's a bridge that goes right into canada yeah it goes right into um yeah why do i forget right now what's besides what's what what's the canadian um thing beside detroit yeah, yeah. No. is it Niagara? There's a Canadian and a New York side, and yeah, to that. Windsor. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry, yep. sorry, sorry. And then That's Niagara, yeah. Good. That's all good. Hey, I I failed geography. I'm not. I'm <laughs> fine with it. I don't know. No. I don't I, know <laughs> like it's for me. It's yeah. I'm yeah. bad. But I'm bad with that. But I got you. Uh, so when I was prepping for this interview, there are a lot of uh, sources online that use this quote, and I saw it on like your band camp too. That Havaya continues to carve out spaces that boldly defy gendered expectations for women in hip hop. And I just wondered, how do you think that this shows up for you in your art? Yeah, I think that like a lot of the things that naturally come out of me expressively, music, fashion, concepts, themes, Mm -hmm. and just the way my art looks and feels is sometimes like not what society does well, mainstream, especially from a female. Mm -hmm. And but it's like where I live, you know what I mean? Right. Like that that output, like if I was to be the type of artist to try to conform, I wouldn't even be successful because like I think the audience would just know how fake it is. The authenticity comes in like my actual personality and one of the biggest things about me, I think is like, I always like take a, a lot of space and I feel the most comfortable comfortable taking up space in ways that I that I know isn't the norm the normality if that mm-hmm. makes sense and um but i've learned that that is what actually is breaking down some of those barriers that a lot of women in different industries face mm-hmm. i receive a lot of compliments that are like backwards backhanded compliments like yeah. i wow you're really good for a female like i used right. to like when i first started that was like something that people would say a lot so it was this catch 22 where it's like you're diminishing me because you think I'm not going to be as good at this job, like being a rapper because I'm a woman, but you're also super wowed Mm -hmm. by the fact that I'm a woman. And that like is what makes me more impressive to you. So then I can kind of carve out space and be like, yeah, I've just shifted your, your mindset. It's like, even like my team, like my DJ, DJ Dem one, she's a woman, my manager, Christina, like my, a lot of my team are women and we get a lot of comments when we travel from other people that are like, wow, like this is mighty gang. Like, because you just don't expect it. You expect, you know, more men to be involved or you expect like, you know, maybe me to like be more like kind of like talk about sexuality in a way where I'm like conforming to like the ideology of like what men find attractive. And then it's like, when you're not doing that, people are like, I didn't know I would like this. So it's like, it's cool because, you know, the thing that sets you back is also for me, the thing that like allows me to feel like, super dope like when i occupy space i feel comfortable doing it because i'm like there's not a bunch of me's right. you know what i mean right. so it's this it's an interesting concept but i love it I, I think that i'm meant 
to do this because when I first started rapping, I didn't realize that being a female rapper like was ba- boundary breaking. So I was just doing yeah. it, but then I started getting all these compliments, back backhanded back compliments, handed, yep. and then that made me realize, oh my goodness, like this is I'm occupying a space just by doing this. But it was so authentic to me that I didn't know that, that that's what it was until right. the reactions to my live performances. So. Right. It's cool. Like, I just, you know, I'm just being myself. And the more that I am gaining success in doing that is the more that I'm actually learning who I am as well. Mm -hmm. And my self-identity is becoming more prevalent to myself. My internal expression is becoming more external because I'm, you know, I'm settling into that version of a vibe mighty that really knows herself, too. So Right. Yeah. I mean, I I said it earlier, but I'll say it again. Like, your authenticity is really, I think, expressed in everything you do. Thank music you. Music and how you present yourself. So it's really cool to see that, and it's really inspiring to, uh, like, as a woman that works in audio, like seeing right. another woman taking up space as like a producer. Absolutely. In a boys club. Because yeah. like, you guys don't know two women here working with me, and it's like <laughs> one man, but like all the lights, like all the the the, the mics, like I, I appreciate these things. I I we have a shop called Long and McQuaid in Canada, mm-hmm. which is like, uh, music retail, yeah. and I worked in DJ and lights. You know, so it was like, and I worked in the rental department. So people would come and be like, I want to rent two 18 inch subwoofers, four 15 inch tops and a mixing board and maybe some DJ lights. And I learned how to like, I know how to run the cables. I would test that gear. Like, and I would even in a retail sense, like Mm -hmm. people would come and be like, wow, she's so strong. Wow. I would never expect a woman behind this counter. They expect the women to be in the band department or like maybe guitars. But when you're in the tech field or the tech lane, it's like. There would I would always get like comments from the customers because they were just yeah. wow they're like they're like how do you know how to set up the gear that I'm gonna use better than I'm the, like you know what I mean yeah yeah and right. it was cool to see that so I know that you yeah. guys are doing that also in your field too so I love it we're we're we're, we're shifting the perception exactly exactly and you kind of touched on this too but it's almost it's bittersweet like it's great that we're we are breaking down these these uh, like boys club type of things but also like. Uh, I one of my professors I work with in the audio realm like sent me a link to something it was like women in audio mission like the fact we have to get to that like even have a group because there's so little of us and not enough taken seriously that's the con of it yeah Yeah. but But we're yeah it's like boundary breaking which I think when you're at the cusp of a change it's always harder for the people that are Mm -hmm. actually kind of facilitating that change so we're gonna feel kind of that weight on our backs but hopefully more than the people that come after us and hopefully we kind of we create that space so while it feels hard like the sacrifice that we make feels good because it's rewarding you know yeah exactly i got one more question for you okay and so you've been having like a crazy ride the past few years with releasing music Uh, you were the first hip-hop artist and black woman to win the polaris prize which congratulations that's awesome thank you so much and then the pandemic hit so what's something that you do to ground yourself in the like chaotic moments? Hmm. I have the best team. I would say Mighty Gang is yeah. the best team. They're very grounding. You know, in chaotic moments, I feel like they just communicate things that make things feel less chaotic by yeah. by grounding me. So I think it's people. Like mm-hmm. I'm also very close to my family, my mom, my dad, like my brother, my sisters. They're very grounding as well. So if I do kind of go off the handles a little bit. Mm-hmm. I feel like they pull me back. Um, I'm trying to get more into cooking more. I, I actually really like it. I feel like cooking is similar to making a song, you know? You have all these layers. So like, you know, the baseline is like a foundation. So you got like, is it pasta or is it bread? Or what's the baseline here? And, and then you mm-hmm. build on it. And there's something that's just really cool about it, like creatively. And um, I learned how to cook things that I actually like in the pandemic, so that was good, yeah. you know? Yeah. Because I used to make things that were just, like, I wouldn't even give it to my friends. Like, so yeah. now, <laughs> that's so that's a really grounding yeah. thing. Also health, you know? Yeah. Um, it just helps with feeling good. Mm-hmm. You know, I think I'm trying to get into working out being a regular grounding thing. Mm-hmm. When I do it, it, it is grounding. But, you know, maintaining a routine is very difficult, especially For with sure. this type of schedule of right. traveling around. But that's another thing I'm trying to do more of. And, um Honestly, I feel like I want to explore more production, like Mm -hmm. actually like just making the beats. I do do it, but yeah, there's this thing where sometimes I feel like I'm like, I produce. I'm not a producer, but I produce. And it's like, no, you you are a producer. And um, there's something that's really cathartic about production, especially when you're not producing for a specific 
like project in mind. Like I think making music without specific business intentions is very grounding for me because mm -hmm. I'm so used to also trying to think about what will work, what won't work. And sometimes you can get lost in the sauce, even like not outwardly, but just even internally. Yeah. So like just building and jam sessions. That's one thing that I miss. Like yeah. we used to do that a lot before the pandemic. Now, obviously, of course, being in a room with a bunch of like people that you don't know is like weird, right. but <laughs> I want to get back to that yeah. because there's some, there's a synergy to having a bunch of different people that like have different like music loves and yeah. then they bring it into the same space. So like, you have a saxophonist over here and like, yeah. people that do harmonies over here, a bass player over here. Um, somebody with a xylophone, like it's, it's like, there's no boundaries when there's no boundaries to the art that yeah. is being made. So I think making more art just to make it, Sure. And not thinking about, am I going to release it, is right. something that I, I want to do more of. And it's very grounding and it's a spiritual, you know, there, there's so much that you take away from it. It's so inspiring. And I find it always leads to something that I do want to release anyway. Because right. of the energy in the yeah. room, it's like it's going to manifest yeah. into like art that you do want to yeah. share no matter what. Yeah. So, yeah, those the are those are some flowing things. flowing energy. Yes. You know, you don't care so much. So it, it helps to get. Like authenticity it's authentic and coming from like in here you know? absolutely for sure. yes well thank you so much thank for you. meeting with me and doing this interview i hope that you have a great rest of south by i we have no more shows i'm so excited we're just gonna you know chill Relax and, and check out other town. people and yeah, yeah just network and you know just try to set it up so we can come back you know? <laughs> perfect <laughs> so my name's abby this is havaya mighty and we're closing out <laughs>